Hey, my name is Mike Acosta from ADSR Sounds, and in this particular video, I'll be walking you through one of our Ableton sessions that we used in creating one of the construction kits in our brand new release, Mad Decent Bass Party. Now this sample pack focuses highly on the big Mumbaton sound of guys like Dylan Francis and Dave Nada and a bunch of others, and it's gonna be a really, really great release on ADSR Sounds. I'll be showing you some of our custom signal processing chains that we use and how we actually save them into Ableton effects racks, which are actually included in the pack, along with some other really cool tips and tricks. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are inside the session of kit number five from our latest release on ADSR Sounds, Mad Decent Bass Party. I'll start by playing this kit from the buildup into the drop so that you can hear everything within context, and then I'll break down each section and show you some of the signal processing chains we used on various tracks. Now, make sure that you're monitoring this through some nice studio monitors or you have a good set of headphones on so that you can hear the very low sub frequencies and the stereo imaging of certain parts as we are gonna AB some of these tracks with processing and without. <laughs> So I'll start by showing the kick drum track where we used the new kick two plugin and made some mild adjustments to preset 39 from the audio tent preset pack future progressive kick two presets. Uh, this is actually a great preset pack which comes with six custom skins to change the overall look of kick two, which is pretty cool. And this is available on ADSR sounds as well. As you can tell, we have a slight focus on the click part of the kick drum while inserting the saturator plugin after kick two to help with the overall body of the kick drum by setting the frequency to about 350 hertz, adding a tad of width and selecting the analog clip mode and engaging the soft clip function. Next is our sub bass track where we are using Ableton's operator synth. We used a little EQ8 to sculpt the tone a bit and then Ableton's multiband dynamics followed by the saturator, which is automated to only be on at certain sections. We then added LFO tool to soften the attack and get a more pumping volume effect so that it didn't clash with the transients of the kick drum. And at the end of the chain, added a bandpass filter with FabFilters Pro-Q2, essentially rolling off most of the high-end frequency content and rolling off below about 30 Hertz. We then automated the pitch to slide up 12 semitones and then down 12 semitones. Pretty simple stuff. Next is our lead part, which has a pretty extensive signal processing chain. So I'll try and cover most of what's happening in there. We start out with Salenth with a preset we named Dylan Francis. And most of the presets we used in this particular release are included as a bonus, so uh, make sure you check those out. We start by rolling off unneeded low end uh, with EQ8 at about 164 hertz. We then follow it with the utility gain plugin and keep the width at zero, making it mono followed by Ableton Saturator with the drive boosted about eight decibels. This now feeds into a custom audio effect rack that contains uh, EQ8, again rolling off the low end at about 200 hertz, and following that with the Valhalla Room. Now we use the audio effect rack as a way to parallel process our signal meaning the dry signal coming directly out of saturator is being passed through unprocessed by the second EQ and the Valhalla room. At the same time, that same signal is being split off and then sent through the second instance of EQ8 and the Valhalla room. We can control the amount being processed in the wet section. As you can see, we're only sending a small amount to the processing. 
This is essentially an auxiliary send method, but all within the channel strip. Now we then follow the audio effect rack with the infamous Ableton OTT plugin, which is basically a multiband upward and downward compressor, which works great for accentuating certain frequencies of a sound. And in this case, we are focusing more on the mid and high frequency section around 2.5 kilohertz. Now we then follow the OTT with EQ8 again to scoop out some of the frequencies between 1K and 2.6K. And we ended up pulling back about, mm, about 7 dBs within that range. Now remember that our sound was mono, so we added Ableton's simple delay to create a pseudo stereo widening effect by simply delaying the left channel by one millisecond and the right channel by 19.7 milliseconds. Now this gives us a nice wide stereo effect with lots of control and clears a lot more space in the center for our kick and bass to cut through. We then use the utility gain again to roll off about three dB of volume as you can see, we also applied the same pitch automation of 12 semitones up and down as we did in the sub bass. And by using this method of the utility gain, this helps keep our gain staging intact without having to adjust the actual track volume fader. Now this next track is our vocal chops. And I think we, <laughs> we probably had too much beer that night because we decided to sample ourselves burping and drop those samples into Ableton's Simpler. With our sample inside of Simpler and the lead pattern copied over, we then follow Simpler with the Lexicon Room plugin and set the wet amount to only about 25%, just to give it a little bit of space. We then follow that with Ableton's OTT again. Then we inserted Ableton's Saturator and increased the drive about 3.43 dB. We then followed the saturator with Isotope's Exciter in Ozone 6, adding about a good 7 to 8 dB in the upper frequencies. We then add in Pro-Q2 to further sculpt the sound, the utility gain to automate the volume at certain sections, added Ableton's Auto Filter to automate the frequency on the buildup section, and again topped off our signal chain with Ableton's Simple Delay to widen out the stereo image with about 19 milliseconds delayed on the left and one millisecond on the right this time. Now we move on to our main drop bus where we have three instances of Expo Records Serum and all the presets that we used for this are also included in the Mad Decent Bass Party Pack. Now on the first track we have Serum with a simple rising envelope on LFO1 assigned to the filter cutoff, frequency, and the warp knobs of both oscillators. So we have a single note drawn in the piano roll editor set to the length of the filter closing within LFO1. We also used uh, Serum's compressor and band reject filter under the effects section. We then have the second instance of Serum on another track, which starts at the next downbeat using the same preset, but with a much more complicated envelope on LFO1 at a different sync rate. Okay, now let me open up all three instances of Serum together so that way we can see them all at once. Now the third instance of Serum is still using the same preset, but again with a different envelope drawing on LFO1. Only this time we set the sync rate to bar, and we automated the sync rate within the sequencer to switch between bar and half note at various times within the sequence. Now on our main drop bus is where we added our signal chain processing. So let me switch everything off so that you can hear it without any processing. And then I'll switch on each module individually to help you hear what's happening to the sound along the way. Okay, so that was the three instances of Serum completely dry out of the main drop bus. 
We first start off with Ableton's saturator, which is pushing the drive about 2 dB using the wave shaper mode. We then follow that with another audio effect rack that contains an instance of EQ8. Now in that audio effect rack, we also have the wet portion of the signal being split and processed in stereo with the Valhalla Room. This keeps our main signal in the center while our room effect is in the stereo field. After the audio effect rack, we added in Ableton's OTT again with only about 30% wet processing. We followed that with the LFO tool by X for Records to add a mild pump effect and again to make space for the kick and sub bass along with other percussive elements that are on the downbeats. After LFO tool, we added another instance of EQ8 to roll off any added lows around 100 hertz. We finally accent everything off before the downbeats with a massive burp that we recorded after a few beers with my wife's awesome green chili. We added some simple processing on that with Ableton's Reverb, the OTT, the Saturator, and Fab Filters Pro Q2 at the end to sculpt the sound a bit by rolling off unneeded low end at about 145 hertz. Below that are the rest of our drums, like the snares, percussion instruments, rides, and hats, which have all been grouped together on a single bus. So I hope that this walkthrough has helped you get an idea of how to utilize some of Ableton's stock plugins, as well as creative ways to shape your sound by creating your own custom signal processing chains. These processing chains can be saved in Ableton for use in other projects, and other DAWs such as Logic Pro 10 have the same kind of feature in its channel strip settings. Same goes for Cubase Pro 8. Only difference are the stock plugins, of course. As I mentioned earlier, this kit is part of five that come in the new release from ADSR, which is titled Mad Decent Bass Party. And this, of course, has five construction kits, which is filled with audio loops, drum one shots, MIDI files, sampler instruments, Ableton signal processing racks, along with some of the synth presets for Solenth, Serum, and Massive. And this is available now at ADSRSounds.com. My name is Mike Acosta from ADSR Sounds. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next video.